Hi everyone, this is Matt Show and Intro Stats, and today we're looking at the empirical rule. The empirical rule, which is another famous rule about normal quantitative data. Um, it's also sometimes referred to as the 68-95-99.7 rule, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So just to kind of remind you, again, when we went over normal quantitative data, we said that the center or the average should be the mean, and the spread or the variability is measured by the standard deviation. That's the most accurate measure of spread for normal data. So um, a question that, that kind of uh, came up a long time ago was, how do we find percentages for quantitative data? Uh, for quantitative variables. So if you kind of think about it, um, categorical data, it's pretty simple, right? We, we kind of look at how many people had a certain characteristic out of the total, right? That's kind of how we calculate calculated percentages for categorical data. But what happens if we're dealing with quantitative data? Um, quantitative data has unique um, properties um, and it makes it problematic sometimes for figuring out percentages. Now, if you're just dealing with sample data, you might say, oh, uh, this many people in my sample data had uh, a height uh, you know, of uh, 69 inches or taller out of the total. So I could figure out at least a sample percentage that way. But if you're dealing with like uh, populations and you're dealing with sort of theoretical, theoretically what would that percentage be, uh, it makes it very difficult, mainly because quantitative data um, is, is infinite, right? It's, a, it's, it's infinite and continuous. So, you know, there's infinitely many numbers just between one and three. So there's infinitely many possibilities between one kilogram and three kilograms. So it makes it very difficult to use things like amount out of total, right? If, like if I said, well, what's the amount? Uh, the amount of people that have uh, something over, um, over uh, maybe a weight over two kilograms, well, that, that would be infinite. And the, the number of total number of numbers between one and three kilograms would be infinite. So it becomes very problematic sometimes to deal with amount out of total. So mathematicians a long time ago came up with something called probability density curves. Uh, probability density curves are used a lot. Uh, and basically, it's a way of calculating percentages uh, based on uh, finding the area under a curve. So kind of think of it this way. You have your, your continuous scale over here. Maybe this is kilograms or something. And then they drew a curve that sort of matches the shape of the, of the data, which would be um, normal in this case. So we have a nice normal bell-shaped curve. And they would use basically the total area under the curve would be 1. Remember, 1 is equal to 100%. So think of this as the total proportion. And then if you wanted to find a percentage or a proportion, you would just look for the area under the curve uh, at a certain place. So um, I could actually use that to actually figure out these proportions that deal with uh, normal data. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind in these curves, and this is a really important idea that's used throughout statistics, is this idea of the area under the curve is the proportion, and then the quantitative data is the scale under the, on the bottom. Okay? So let's look at an example, and we can kind of work through this a little bit. Um, so let's suppose we have a company that sells bracelets, and they're interested in uh, what, uh, what are the sizes of women's wrists? So we looked at some women's wrist circumference uh, and uh, we're going to assume that they came out normal. Uh, in fact, we looked at some of this data. This is one of the ones we looked at in a previous video. Uh, and the mean came out to 5.067 inches and the standard deviation was 0 0.331 inches. Now I'm going to assume that this was applying to all women. Um, and if, if, uh, if that was the case, then um, what kind of percentages would we, would we, could, we, um, could we calculate? Well, it turns out, so if we draw the normal curve here, um, and I put the mean in the middle. Now, I am using the mean of the sample mean, uh, x bar. Sometimes in stat books, you will see the Greek letter mu used. And I used S for standard deviation, though sometimes you will see sigma if you're dealing with a population standard deviation. 
Um, so if we look at this, um, so we see the mean is in the middle. And then if we go one standard deviation above or below the mean, um, usually that occurs right at about about halfway down the slope, like when, when uh, right, kind of when this stops being a hill and starts being a valley, right, kind of like that. Um, in calculus, we often call that an inflection point. So we have an inflection point there. And, and again, if you kind of look at that, um, you can, um, that's sort of where one standard deviation usually falls. And then usually once you measure that, you just kind of go and, and replace it. So what I'm looking at is, if I go one standard deviation above or below the mean. Now it turns out if you calculate the area under the curve, and long before computers we had already calculated this with statistics, or I'm sorry, with uh, calculus to calculate areas under the curve. Again, calculus is used a lot for that. And we found that this, these two sections right here are both about 0.34. And by the way, statisticians had noticed this sort of commonality that if you're in normal data, if you were within one standard deviation, usually it was about 68% of the data. So this is where we get that 68% uh, that of the data is typical. If you remember, these are the typical values here. Um, and uh, again, these sections right here are both 0.34. And it's sort of always 0.34 if we have a normal, uh, normal shape. Now, if we go to, uh, go to two standard deviations, so x bar plus 2s, now again, we have a less area here. And it turns out that area is about 0.135. And then th between two and three standard deviations is about 0.0235. And then more than three standard deviations is hardly any, we have 0 0.0015. So these, these proportions are actually always the same for normal data. That's why it's called a rule. It's the same percentages each time. Now these numbers in the bottom will change for, depending on the situation, but the percentages, the proportions here, will be the same. That's kind of how you want to think about it. And that's where it got its name, the empirical rule. Um, if you go, if you actually add up the middle two, you get 68% or 0.68. If you met, add up the middle four, the four, four sections right here, between two standard deviations below and two standard deviations above, that adds up to 0.95 or about 95%. And again, most people, we would already kind of knew these numbers from calculus. Um, but in the modern day, computers, actually computer software, can calculate these numbers for you. Uh, in fact, we'll do another video where I'm going to show you how to actually calculate all these proportions with just using computer software. Um, so then if you, again, if you, if you go here, if I go three standard deviations away, now that would be six sections, sort of the middle six sections. So if I add up 0 0.0235 plus 0.135 plus 0.34 plus 0.34 plus 0.135 plus 0 0.0235, it adds up to about 99.7% or 0.997. And this is again where the empirical rule sometimes gets its name, 68, 95, 99.7 rule. One standard deviation from the mean, this is about 68%. Two standard deviations from the mean, 95%. Three standard deviations from the mean, 99.7%. That's kind of where it got that, that name. Now, if I want to go ahead and fill this chart out a little bit so I can understand women's risk circumferences a little bit, I'm going to put the mean in the middle, right? The mean's in the middle. If I go one standard deviation above, right? That would be 5.067 plus 0.331, and that's how I got 5.398 right there. Now I'm going to multiply the standard deviation by 2 and then add it there, add it to the mean, and that would be 5.729. Multiply the standard deviation by 3 and add it to the mean, and we get 6.060. Similarly, I can do the same thing. I can do the mean minus the standard deviation, which is 4.736, minus two standard deviations, 4.405, and minus three standard deviations, 4.074. Uh, if you're doing this by hand, um, you know, like in the old days before computers, uh, you would basically put the mean in the middle and then you would just subtract the standard deviation three times and put the mean in the middle then put add the standard deviation three times. That's an easy way to do it. Now, to keep in mind that we did learn z-scores, right, recently, a z-score is how many standard deviations you are above or below the mean. So let's suppose you're at 0.0. 
the mean plus 1s. Well, you're one standard deviation above the mean. That would mean your z-score for this number right here, if we use that z-score formula we learned last time, that would have a z-score of 1. And this number here is two standard deviations above the mean, so it would have a z-score of 2. This number here is two standard deviations below the mean, so it would have a z-score of negative 2. So you can kind of see how the z-scores kind of line up with this. By the way, if you look at these percentages with the z-scores, um, then you get something called the standard normal distribution. Standard normal distribution is the z-score distribution, which shows you the percentages for normal data using z-scores. In the old days, what you would do is you'd calculate the z-score, and then you'd look up the percentage that goes with that z-score on, on a chart. Modern statistics, now we use computers to do this. You can have a computer calculate the percentage uh, for you. Okay? So let's look at all these questions we could answer from this chart. So if we were able to sort of see this chart, we could actually answer quite a bit of questions about women's uh, wrist circumference. So what percent of women have wrist circumference greater than 5.398? So 5.398 is right here, right? It's one standard deviation above the mean, okay? So we're looking for everything greater, greater than kind of think right tail. It's really important that you start to get used to dealing with tails. This is a very common thing that will carry you throughout statistics. So think greater than, I want you to think, okay, right tail. That's where the bigger numbers are, right? Right tail. So right tail. Not left tail, right tail. Bigger, greater than. So we're looking for all of the sections that are bigger than 5.398. Well, if you notice, there's actually three sections, these three right here. So 0 0.135, 0 0.0235, and 0 0.0015. So to get the answer, we would just want to add up those three sections because they're all bigger than that cutoff of 5.398. So my answer, so my answer would be uh, 0 0.135 plus uh, point, 0.0235 